there year four it's me mrs mckee here again back in the hut how have you been since last i saw you okay i hope keeping yourselves busy it's a bit colder today in the hut because it's raining outside and it's going to do that for the rest of the week i've heard so hopefully these videos might give you something to do whilst you're indoors so without further ado let's get ourselves warmed up First of all, we're going to get our bodies and voices warmed up. Can you say this for me? Oh! Can you do that? Oh! Can you next talk very posh like this? I would like you to say, Gracious, do I really? Oh my gosh! Can you do it? Gracious, do I really? Oh my gosh! Very good. And then I want you to shake three times. Shake, shake, shake. Really shake your body all the way down and back up again, just like you're a dog in the wash. And I want you to say, grrr, woof. Can you do it? Grrr, woof. So this is the last, th uh, the last verse of the Energize the Body song that we've been doing. So we're now going to put those sounds and actions with the words that are going to give you the cues. So if I say this, going to open our throat, you're going to go, Oh, just like you've been to the doctors. So can you do it with me? Gonna open our throat. Oh, gonna talk real posh. Gracious, do I really? Oh my gosh. Gonna shake, shake, shake. Give it a big shake up and down. Like a dog in the wash. Grrr, woof. Okay, let's do that one more time. And then we're gonna try the whole thing with the music. So it goes like this, gonna open our throat, oh, gonna talk real posh, gracious, do I really, oh my gosh, gonna shake, 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 shake it down, shake it up, like a dog in the wash, Grrr, woof, fantastic, the very last bit that we do, before we're going to go back to the beginning, instead of pumping our right hands and our left hands in the air, like we've done at the end of both the verses we've had already what I want you to do is now put your hands out imagining that you've got a friend next to you you might have I don't know so then we take the hand of our nearest friend can you do that for me then we take the hand of our nearest friend and then we're going to do a big bow because it's the end then we take a bow because we've reached the end can you do that with me then we take a bow because we've reached the end so that last bit again goes, then we take the hand of our nearest friend and we take a bow because we've reached the end. Okay, so that's the very, very last bit of the Energize the Body song. We're gonna energize the body, get the body ready, feel the beat and we've gotta keep it steady. We're in the mood, we're in the know. Get ready, get set and here we go. And then there are just the little questions and answers that we've done before. I hope this is gonna get you moving, get your blood pumping, get your la, 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 lips ready to do some singing. Here comes the music. So, on the floor, gotta energize the body, gotta get the body ready, gotta feel that beat, and we gotta keep it steady. We're in the mood, we're in the know, get ready, get set, and here we go. Gotta pump those lungs. <laughs> Gotta dive in the lake. <laughs> Gotta work those tongues. <laughs> Gonna shiver and shake. <laughs> then we strike a pose and we take a stand and we touch the air with a bomb right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Energize the body. Gotta get the body ready. Gotta feel that. Get the body ready. 
gotta feel the beat And we gotta keep it steady We're in the mood, we're in the note Get ready, get set, and here we go Gonna open our throats Oh! Gonna talk real posh Gosh, yes, do I really? Oh my gosh! Gonna shake, shake, shake Like a dog in the wash then we take the hand of the nearest friend and we take a bow because we've reached the end. Excellent, everybody. Well done, you. I hope you're all warmed up. I hope you've got your voices ready to do some singing this time. And get your brains working as well because I've got some interesting things to show you this time. Okay, you can have a seat. I'm going to get rid of this piece of music. And I'm going to get myself ready to show you a few interesting things about Roman music. So, it seems that music wasn't as important to the Romans as it was to the Greeks, apparently. There is some evidence to show that they used music for important ceremonies and for plays and dancing. And historians and archaeologists, you should know who those people are now, have found some actual instruments and they found some pictures and some statues and mosaics showing Romans playing those instruments. Most of the instruments that they've discovered fit into the same families of instruments as we have in our classical orchestra today. So there's four families. There's brass, there's wind, there's strings and percussion. And you know what percussion is now, don't you? Things like drums and shakers, rattles, everything that you hit, scrape or shake. So I've got some pictures today of some Roman instruments. And I've also got some examples of modern day instruments that are similar and would match the families that the instruments have uh, come from. Now, I'm not a super techie wizard, I'm afraid. So all I've been able to do is to photocopy some pictures of these instruments. I'm gonna hold them up to the screen and hope that you can see them. But if you get stuck and you can't, and they're not very clear maybe, I have sent a link to Mrs. Killick, which I hope she's gonna be posting to your teachers. Um, to the British Museum's website and that's got a collection of Roman instruments on a kind of I think like a PowerPoint a lesson plan PowerPoint so you can actually have a look a lot more closely at the instruments that mm, some of them I might mention today so I'm going to see if this works let's try it okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a picture of some Roman instruments. They might actually be real ones that were dug up or discovered somewhere, or they might just be uh, a, an illustration or a picture of one. And I want you to see if you can think of what are an example of a modern day instrument of the same family might be. So that's equivalent. That means like a similar thing, the same sort of thing. So if I was to show you this picture here, here I come. Can you see that? It's like two little metal plates. How do you think you play these instruments? Here's a clue. They come in pairs and they're made of metal. We've actually got a few of these at school and you may well have played them before. I've got some with me here today. I hope you're shouting at me through the screen. They're finger symbols, and these ones actually look very, very similar to the ones that were in the picture. Can you see those? Little discs of metal, they look identical, don't they? And you can play them like this. You can put them together like this. And we're fairly sure from illustrations that the Romans would have used these to accompany dancing and maybe some religious ceremonies as well. So there you go, finger symbols, Roman instruments in the 21st century. Okay, another one. 
Okay, here I come. Here's the picture. So let's see if I can get this up. Now this is an odd one because the Egyptians used this as well, right? It's a bit blurry that one, but I don't know if you can see it quite clearly. Let me try and put it towards the light a bit. Can you see that? It was called a sistrum and it was made out of metal again. And it's like a U-shaped thing with a handle with some kind of like skewers stuck through so that they, what do you think? How do they played it? Did they pluck them? What do we think? It's a bit like a shaker. Or because it's made of metal, it might be a little bit like this. So, percussion instruments, finger cymbals and jingle bells. I know these are made of little circles with bells in, but the idea is the same. It's metal touching metal, shaking against metal. So that's what makes the sound. So there's your percussion. Okay. Here I come, I'm back again. Let's have another one. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Ah, now, this is a member of the orchestral family called brass. And it's one, I'm afraid, that I don't have an actual instrument of because I don't really play brass instruments. But can you see, there's a little tiny statue. Oh, it's not very clear, is it? There we go, that's better. What is unusual about how this man is playing his trumpet? He's blowing it to the side instead of down the end. So our modern day trumpets don't look a bit like that. But that's because technology has come on so far since the Romans that instrument makers have worked out how to make the air, which makes the sound in a brass instrument, go through lots of different pipes and has little valves. You know, like when you put your fingers on the recorder, it changes the pitch. On trumpets and brass instruments, there are valves to change how much air is going through the instrument. So that's why they sound and look much more complicated. Now, as I said, I don't have many brass instruments. What I do have, though, which is sort of similar, is this. Are you ready? Hold on to your hats. It's my Victorian taxi horn. I blew that for the NHS last week and it made everybody else go back indoors. So look. It's a curly whirly brass tube. And at the end is a big, big rubber ball. If I don't have the plastic on it, it comes off on my fingers because it's that old. But if I squish it, it pushes the air through the tube, eventually, and out the other end. So that's really what a brass instrument is doing. Only a person is doing the blowing instead of the rubber ball at the end. Okay, I've got two more. There we go. What's this one here? You guys should have a pretty good idea about what's going on here. Here are some wind instruments. What modern instrument do you think they're like? I'm gonna put it up closer so you can see. It is a tube with little holes. What could that possibly be here for? Could it possibly be like a recorder? I hope that's what you were shouting at the screen. Now, this is a Roman instrument called a tibia. So that is rather like a recorder. It's got holes for your fingers and you blow through one end. But the Greeks also had something very similar, which is where the Romans got the idea from. And they used to play two of them together. So they'd stick two tubes two instruments in their mouths and they play them both at the same time which is ever so clever you can actually see youtube clips of people doing that there's a guy called callum armstrong have a look for him he's playing what they called an aulos in greek two instruments at the same time the other thing that was a bit different about the greek instrument was that instead of being like a recorder 
where the air gets split. You remember in that little tiny hole that's at the top of the recorder? Those instruments had something called reeds in them. So they're definitely wind instruments still. And I've got a very old instrument here. This is a copy of a Tudor instrument, but I just thought I'd show you what the reeds look like. So I'm gonna bring this up really close to you here. So again, it's a wooden tube. And can you see that there? This is made of plastic, but they used to make them out of cane or wood or reeds. That's why they're called reeds. There's two bits that get sandwiched together tightly like this so that the air goes through the top and makes the reed vibrate instead of just the air. And because this is a clever, clever Tudor instrument, it's got a cap on the top of it. Okay, you're ready for this. This is one of the best instruments in the world. It's called a crumb horn. Are you ready? It takes a lot of puff and it sounds like this. <laughs> what we think an aulos would have sounded like but can you imagine two of them at the same time goodness me pretty noisy i think so i can understand why the romans took the reeds out and made them sound a little bit more like recorders It'd be gorgeous okay so that's our wind instrument so we've had percussion we had the t uh, the tuba the brass instrument it's called a tuba that long trumpet thing and now we've had a wind instrument the tibia okay so long, one last one this is an illustration so i'm gonna to have to hold it up really close so can you see that one there oh you can see my fingernails can you see that it's called a lyre and it was one of the stringed instruments that the romans used and the equivalent really these days is like a harp but actually, most stringed instruments that we play today are very similar to that idea. Most of them get plucked. You know, a harp gets plucked. Yeah, a guitar, you pluck that with your fingers, don't you? The only other stringed instruments that don't get plucked are those instruments from the orchestra. Violins, violas, cellos, double basses things like that. So I have brought the nearest thing that I can find to a harp. I'm sure you know what it is. It's the same idea as a lyre in that I've got to hold it up like this. They would have held them like that probably. It's got lots of strings and instead of using my fingers to pluck it, you know what happens? I use my little plectrum. And this is just a bit more complicated because I can press the buttons down for a chord. But it's the same idea as a Roman lyre. Okay, so there we have some Roman instruments that match the families of the orchestra that we use today. Okay, so. How about we finish off our Boudicca song before it's time for me to go? I hope you remember most of the words that we've been doing over the last few weeks. I'm sure you know the patterns now. What we're gonna do today is just have a go at the very last verse. Okay, so I hope you've got your, your teeth in ready for this. So far, we've learnt the uh, 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 Ba boudica, ba 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 boudica, ba 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 chant. We learnt the other two chants that go um, in the middle of the section, which was Roman army, Roman army, and then there was the other one, which was Emperor Claudius. Emperor Claudius and you remember at the end of those three chants we go 
What are the Romans? Rubbish! What? So this next section is what happens after that. So this is verse 2. So slightly different words, but the same tune as verse 1. So after me, see if you can sing this. They battled hard on hill and field. I'll do it one more time. They battled hard on hill and field. Here we go. They battled hard on hill and field. And then it goes. They blunted swords and dented shields. So I'll do that one more time for you. They blunted swords and dented shields. Can you do that with me? They blunted swords and dented shields. Okay, so that's they battled hard on hill and field. They blunted swords and dented shields. Okay, the next bit goes. Until at last the deed was done. Can you do it? Until at last the deed was done. Lots of D sounds in this one, aren't there? Battled hard, field, blunted, swords, loads of them. And then the very last bit tells you the name of the tribe that Boadicea, Boudica, was uh, queen of, the Iceni. So it goes like this. I seen I lost. You do it. I seen I lost. The Romans won. You will go. The Romans won. So those two together go. Until at last the deed was done. I seen I lost. The Romans won. And then we can do a big, you can choose which side you're on. Hooray if you're for the Romans and if you're for the Iceni. So that whole verse all the way through goes like this. They battled hard on hill and field. They blunted swords and dented shields until at last the deed was done. I seen I lost. The Romans won. Hooray! Then we go back to verse 1. There was a queen in days of old. When it came to war, there was none so bold. You remember that whole verse. We go all the way back, do that whole thing all the way through. And then the very last section is the chant that we did at the beginning. Ba, 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 boudica. But instead of going ba, ba, boudica at the end, we go bye bye, boudica. Okay, so do you think you've got your brains ready to do this whole thing? We've got to do the chant, Baba Boudicca. Verse one, there was a queen in days of old. Then there's the three chant split up. So you, like you did last week, can choose the Baba Boudicca, which comes last, Emperor Claudius, which comes second, or Roman army, which comes first. Then we do, what are the Romans? Rubbish. Verse 2, we just learnt about battling hard and hill and field. Back to verse 1, there was a queen in days of old. This sounds a lot more complicated than it is. Then we do verse 1 all over again, then it's the last chant with bye bye boudicca and you can do a big yeah at the end, if you so desire. Right, let me see if I can get the right track. And let me see if you're ready. I feel we should stand up for this because I feel like it's going to be a bit of a performance. Okay, so are you stood up? Have you got your battle feet, your battle stance ready? Let's do it. Okay, so up we get. And use a bit of movement in this song. Make up your own action. <laughs> Bunch. Then came the 
Romans Then came the crunch Uh oh Roman army Roman army Roman army Roman army Emperor army Claudius Boudicca song. Next time I see you, we're going to learn another song about another area of Roman Britain that you may be learning about. You may not, but I'm sure you would have heard of it. And we're probably going to have a look at those chopstick staves that we had a look at last time. So take care of yourselves. I hope you enjoyed this video, number three. I'll see you next time for number four. Bye bye, Boudicca.